Hello and welcome to another edition of the Sligo Show, the paper review show as we call it, where we have a look through the two local papers, the Sligo Weekender and the Sligo Champion. As I always say, uh, we're not affiliated to the papers, we just think they do a great service to so many people around the town, whether it's sport, whether it's business, whether it's entertainment. And we like to just have a flick through them and we encourage everyone to go and buy the papers because buying them, you're supporting your local community. This week, I'm joined by a friend of mine, Sean Purcell, involved in a lot of the Thanks arts brilliant. world and the theatre world in Sligo. So, great to um, be here. It's good to have you. So we'll, we'll chat a bit about you with some exciting projects coming up soon as well. So we'll uh, maybe have a chat about them near the end. So we're going to delve straight into it. This weekend, we're going to feature first The Weekender. Uh, I see there's a nice little bit of news just to focus on the gentleman, Tom Nyland, who was attacked in his own home. So again, we don't get into the difficult stories, but equally, I just think it's nice to hear that the man has shown slight improvement. So hopefully that progresses for him and his family. Uh, an exciting bit of news for Saigo, a live music venue is about to open. Uh, Sean, would you have gone into McHugh's bar over the years? Years ago, when I came first, I'm here now, uh, 15 years, I did. And I suppose uh, there are so many live music venues, but it's a case of pulling them together, Brendan, isn't it? Yeah. Some sort yeah. of, I mean, John the Map it does a wonderful like job. Musicians.com, yeah, yeah, like just eternally unbelievable what he does. But I think this was the journeyman, I'd say, the pub, when you, were, when you went to it, saw it first. I think that's, McHugh's was the journeyman, and now McHugh's. Yeah, and it's been dormant okay. for a few years, and I mean, I worked on it myself, and it's a fabulous, fabulous space and location. So, look, I think it's great to see. I mean, the problem a lot of the venues are long, narrow venues. Mm. You need for somebody a performance space that somebody can go into, you yeah, know, yeah. and you're not getting a microphone in the face of somebody. No, 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 that can happen in town as well. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, I think it's a. Uh, yeah, look, they're, like they're remodeling good, yeah. the place as well. So, it's going to be Brilliant, called Gracie's yeah, yeah. Bar. People will check it out on, on social media and that. But I think, uh, you know, a few venues, Fifth and Teal and McGarrigal's, you know, a few of the real. Die hard music places have, have gone. So it's I think nice you to told me um, last year there were on one week there were forty seven individual events going, music events going on. You know, so wouldn't be surprised. People can go to them now. Uh, I was just talking to one of the girls at the cafe in, in town in O'Connor Street there, and she was. We were just talking about the bank holidays being yeah. one on top of the other, and really she was saying what's happening now is that people are they're spreading it over. It's not that more people are coming in, so that's something that people might be conscious of how you yeah. organise a bit structured, you know? Uh, well, again, as you said, maybe there's like a, 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 a thought, thought together thinking between all yeah. the venues to go. Yeah. And let's, I always say it, let's all support each other, plug each other, we'll get the crowds to Sligo well, and then we can fight over them after that. Yeah, but there's look, competition, but yeah. it, it, people can pull together and you're much stronger, yeah. Yeah, and again, I see another fashion sh- store is open in Sligo on O'Connell Street, so Jared Fashion's coming. So again, I love to hear these stories where people are putting their confidence into Sligo uh, and it's really turning that tide the last few years. That's their moving out of Quayside. Quayside, though, okay, yeah. so more signature. Yeah. I think the, key, the main street would be great well, to see it's, it buzzing. Wouldn't it be? Yeah, wouldn't it be yeah, the main absolutely. street? You need to have that. And I, just a good story here again. Well done to the, the local Coast Guard who rescued five people going out to Coney Island. I know you're a big oh. Coney Island fan. I've never been. Oh, uh, Brendan. I know, Seriously. I know, I know. But like Coney uh, is just magical. The, the fact that you're walking on the seabed mm. on the way out. Um, and I suppose the message here is for people, it's in black and white there. There's a big sign with a text. And they even said here, like, if, you want, if you're not sure when to go, just text. Yeah, and, and, and there, you can catch the text, but the, the thing is, just don't take chances. And I see it. The, the other thing about it is, you see people driving out. Now, most of the cars who drive out yeah. are rented cars, right? So and nobody's not going thinking, to bring your own car because And they might just be just here for a day and they take a chance. But, but it's, yeah, a, it's a magical spot. You're, you're sort of a bit that you, you want to hit people to find it out, but you don't want everybody because <laughs> it was too one day last summer, there may be 40 or 50 cars oh, wow. out on the sand one, day, one Sunday. But they're entitled to it. I mean, no, it's I great. That the pub is open there as well now. Oh, the pub is yes. open. Now, there's breaking news. That's the kind of news we want on the Sligo show. There's a pub open at Coney Island. So you can have your walk and have your great. pint. Well, now I'll definitely go out, so yeah. that sounds awful. Uh, moving through here, I see the ATU are involved in a really cool historical dig. An excavation revealed conditions of an IRA cave hideout during the Civil War in Sligo. So it's up in the Dartry Mountains. So again, there's a, I just love these little stories. We don't tell you all the details in this show, but like, it's just go and read them. Like, it's fascinating what they're doing. And I think the ATU becoming a bigger entity now is going to probably get involved more and more. Uh, just in relation to the ATU, I don't think I was talking to you about it before because I would have been on the governing body of the three different yeah. colleges. And I went to the opening of it. And I don't have to go to those things anymore. Yeah, yeah. But I think that's a really big occasion. And I, I, it, pro- it did get a lot of press, but I, I hope that local people realise it's not about everybody being able to, to go to their local university. Mm. I mean, to say you have a university is great, and it's a university town or city, but it's not about that as much as, uh, you know, because people will go to others. You want to get people into it. You mm. want the people to go away and come back then. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's yeah. really, that's it. That's I think it's a huge yeah. moment in Sligo's history. Yeah. And as you said, maybe not everyone kind of maybe understood it. Fair enough. But I think we'll really start to see these green shoots 
in everyone's face in the coming years. Uh, Lock Guild Distillery is reportedly... More drink. They're going to be... <laughs> we'll always focus on the drinks. Uh, they're going to be bought, apparently, by the Paddy Whiskey Group, if I have that mm. correct. Again, another Sligo success story. Started off a small company. Uh, Ahru Whiskey, I suppose, is one of the signature whiskies out there. So, well done to the guys at Lock Guild. Hopefully that goes. And again, sure... Who knows what that's going to mean for Sligo? Like, there's a huge site out there, uh, so maybe that's... I don't know whether you've walked out there, the Lady yeah. on Walk, which has been developed. I think Michael Carty from the council that's doing that work there, and I hadn't done it since last summer, and I did it last week. Yep. And uh, that's stunning. I mean, it's another example of a jewel, and I, I didn't meet anybody in the way except this guy who was um, marking the trees for that they're are they're not kind of native. Okay, yeah, and they're doing a big clear out in Hazel. I was, it's cleared the road to Denver yeah. was going out of it. It was at eight o'clock, and I was just, saying, what's this guy going around with <laughs> orange paint? And he said, I'm okay, I'm normal, I'm not mad, you know. So, well, then go for the walk, yeah. and then maybe yeah, stay for a, stay yeah. for a whiskey. Yeah, that's it. Uh, one of my favourite pieces in the local papers is the Sligo Weekenders Events Roundup. Again, I'm going to just dip in through them, but I suppose when you buy the paper, especially the Weekender, watch out for this piece. I love it. Kieran Quinn's team night starts tonight, and this is a historic one because it's a new decade of Kieran mm. Dooney's shows, and it's mm. the first one in three years where no masks well no masks are required and a full audience are you heading over to any night yourself or no plans I'm in it. you're in I'm it performing ah, very sure, quiet, of keeping that very quiet well it'll be revealed haven't done it for, we haven't done it for years but he asked me to do he's an original piece and I think oh. it was Luke Devaney that saw a piece on and I, I'm not I don't do the out front stuff yeah, but yeah. I, look out of your comfort zone yeah I'm doing so I'm looking forward to it yeah, it's, it's fantastic you're doing each night doing. Uh, Thursday and Friday night yeah. Cool, cool Well I hope to get there tonight So uh, I'll, I'll go and I'll t- I'll <laughs> I tell know you who's shouting in the audience <laughs> So yeah A uh, few gigs going on Roshi Noel uh, Again I know she's her own entity But I suppose a lot of people might know her As Mary Black's daughter Fabulous, yeah. beautiful singer And she's in Anderson's on Saturday night uh, The model have a screening of A Greenland story The documentary reveals a country And people at a crossroads Between tradition and modern- modernity That's a weird word to say And they are that's in uh, funds are going to the Ukrainian Red Cross and Sligo Bay or in lie. The Whistling Donkeys, I think they're a very popular folk band there in the Radisson uh, end of the month. Again, all the details will be in the paper. Biodiversity Week walk. This sounds very intriguing, I think. Tuesday, May the 17th, there'll be a, you can go on a woodland walk with ecologists for a guided pollinator walk and talk. So that's happening at Dooley Park at half four on Tuesday, May the 17th. Again, all the details in the paper. And back to the ATU, they have their open day, and I've seen an ad in the papers. They have a real proper open day. Come in, see the place, come and see the accommodation. There's talks about even leaving their students and their study tips and all that. They've really kind of launched it. There's a bit of music and fun and giveaways and all that. So they've yeah, really put a lot of energy. You'd like to see the connection. There's a need to have the connection between the college and the schools, you know, direct. Mm. So therefore, you've got to have the connection between the guidance, the teachers, the counselors, yeah. uh, you know, to, to get in and see what's going on because the, the, the university here will have apprenticeships and degrees it's and true, yeah. your masters etc so uh, that's a very exciting era that's ahead of us you know yeah, no no and i think even if you're not going to the college it might be a good day to go in yeah. and get a look around the place you know were you at the open uh, yeah the, we were i was working at it with myself and brian oh, that's right. we but did our little thing it was lovely to go up the, the wheel and all that uh, i didn't go on the wheel myself now there was such a queue i said those parents oh, Jesus, will yeah, will uh, yeah, have yeah. me head if i try and skip yeah. in ahead of them uh tomorrow friday there's a charity darts night in the yates county hotel storytelling night at lily's this was on last week and it's back on may the 12th which is Next Thursday, I think, yeah. Uh, this is just come in, tell your story. They have a theme each night. This month's theme is taking a chance. So it's Lily's uh, next That's Thursday. That's a yeah. new idea, isn't it? Yeah, very much. And I've seen bits in the paper again about it. it they had a real successful first night and it's just something different. Uh, Jack B. Yates History Night is the Sligo Heritage and History Club uh, this Sunday, May the 8th. And that is on in the Yates building. No Crows are joining the... What is it now? I'll just get this right. Sligo Bass Folk Orchestra, No Crows, and the Sligo Baroque Orchestra. Now, that'll be a special I just sound. saw uh, a couple of nights ago on uh, a post that um, I think it was Jonathan Carter put up uh, with No Crows and the Baroque. Mm. And it's Philippe singing. Yes. And, oh, my God, it is just stunning. It's just really... Uh, heart, you know, it really hits at the heart. It's well, I think stuff, so no crows on their own are amazing. Yes, and then the Baroque orchestra, yeah. like uh, and it, like it's and just that's stunny, You won't get that many places. No, no, no. Yeah. And that's on one o'clock, and it is on. Just make sure I get these bits right. It's hard to be Sunday in the model. Isn't Sunday, it? one o'clock. Yeah, yeah I think so. Again, yeah. all details are in the papers. Yeah. And moving through the weekender here, 
As I said, we do each other too. Now, this I love this little idea, and I don't know if many people know it. A first free in-person digital course for older people start today in Sligo. Now, Sean, obviously you're not at that age, but oh, you're so kind. When you get, gone when you get older, I'm there. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not precious. Yeah. <laughs> when you get when you get older, it's something it's like. Mm. And I mean, the thing I love about it is, and, and what is it? It's a so first it's digital. It's, it's, it's a digital course to help the elderly to get more digitized, I suppose, or more okay, used to different yeah. things. So topics covered include sending emails, keeping in touch with friends and family through social media or video calling, mm-hmm. online banking, government services, so looking up for hobbies or travel, reading, watching, listening to news. Some of the most basic stuff, you know, or us younger people have grown up with, but I suppose some people do get isolated because they go, I have no idea how to well, do the, this. Well, the so. challenge, for example, my father is in his early 90s, so he wants to talk to somebody in, on the phone through the phones about the phone or about the electricity yeah. or whatever and he gets this voice Automatic. and um, he's probably past that stage but I think you get a lot of people say like at my age that wouldn't have had although from the job I, 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 I would have been familiarised with yeah. it but people who you bring them in now is the time to get them in and it makes life easier isn't it? because it must for be an awful challenge you ring up and you're left half an hour waiting for somebody or oh, yeah, you can only told. do it on email I even tried to book a hotel uh, yeah. there in Derry and they said oh if you go on our website I was like can I just do it now like you know it's like that's just the way it is no, but I, I mean I, I just called in on the way over because uh, my driving licence is up and I was saying to the guy have you got a form he said oh there are no forms <laughs> Uh, and it was very helpful and everything in the driving license just for people who are thinking if they have to go in there uh, but he was t- t- telling me just go online and book your appointment come in we'll take a photograph yeah, yeah. that's as simple uh, as and that's I, was at, uh, I was at Kevin Bridges in Galway last week and he said it's like these elderly people after coming out of lockdown they go into a restaurant now can I get a soup and they go no here's a QR code yeah. <laughs> so it's like what are yeah. you on about like, yeah. so it is it's, it's very true uh, quick flicking through a few little events here the Celtic Tenors they're coming to Sligo May the 22nd that's in the Hawkswell mm. and we'll just jump through here now if you excuse me um, I see having a laugh charity we had Val on here last week and they were uh, having their fundraiser it happened on Tuesday this week mm. and they raised 3,230 euro this is for their new flourish cafe idea so again check out having a laugh on their social media do support this cafe I think it's going to be a great um, community facility to have and now this is very interesting Sligo people can avail of free counselling sessions so this is no, turn to me yeah I just I just seen this turn to me dot e right and what it says is uh Everyone in Sligo, unless I'm reading this wrong, is entitled to six free counselling sessions. So I just mm. think that was amazing that you'd never know that. And again, you'd only hear With whom? This. Who's, who's Turn to Me.ie is a national That's mental health charity. national, okay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Isn't it amazing that we have the need for these... I know. type of uh, programs now for people isn't it yeah but I suppose it's equally that it's, it's there I mean not everyone's going to do it just because it's free but some people that maybe needed it they couldn't afford it so well I think that after the last two years and I don't want to get bogged down in that yeah, but, yeah. but nobody is an, like in reflection over the next few years and you see the effect I mean Emma my wife is a teacher at, in, in a school here mm. in Sligo and talking about the first years and how they now appear as second years and they're so much more timid yeah, they've been yeah. wearing masks but what effect is that in terms of them down the line what about the effect on older people and who's responding are we having conversations around that so yeah. to see any sort of counselling free or not but particularly here free and that people I mean that should be pushed out there, uh, well I mean it? as I said I would never have even known it only for the paper mm. and so I keep saying to people get the papers uh, there's so many little small things you'd learn whether it's an event or something like that mm. uh, very quickly Sligo business are being urged to prioritise sustainability efforts and, per- and commit to urgent action and again that's on climateacademy.ie master classes so again mm. All the details are in the paper. And again, if I just flick through, another interesting news story here. Sligo tourist office was closed, essentially closed there in the last year. And there was a lot of furore about it and people giving out. And I mean, understandably, maybe to a point. But it's going to open, but it's only going to be seasonal. But I think the key thing here is Sligo Bid, which if anyone doesn't know is a business improvement district. uh, They're going to take over the office as their main office. And they are just involved in nearly everything positive that's happening in Sligo. So mm-hmm. I think to have them as the anchor tenant in that, in that place will be amazing. Uh, so there'll be a Caesar Tourist Information Centre that's been made possible via partnership with Fall Charlotte, Sligo Bid, Sligo County Council and Sligo Leader. And I know Gail in the bid, she would have been a big part in driving this. And, and I know they have lots of good plans there. So, But you can see in the last few years, like to me, Sligo was a place that people passed through. Yeah. They went to Drumcliff and on to Donegal or whatever. And you do see people in town and there needs to be a come back to this thing we've talked about this before Brendan about the you know a, a vision what Sligo looks like in five years what do we want yeah. for tourism what do the businesses want and not talking about tomorrow but in five years how do we see it so 
I'd be very optimistic that this group will bring that to it, you know, yeah, which is and what's it, needed. And collaboration, which is a massive thing in Sligo that hasn't always happened. And this is between the council, Sligo leader, Sligo bid and Fault Ireland. So that's get the people huge involved. things. It's like yeah. the Patrick's Day Parade this year. Yep, yep. It was driven by Fault Ireland, bid, the council and the parade committee themselves. And that's, uh, if you collaborate, the more energy, more people, more resources, you know. Uh, just very quickly, people in Sligo been urged to sign up for the 100k in 30 days challenge. It's for Breast Cancer Ireland. And again, all the details are in the paper and there's prizes to be won. There's three darkness into light walks on this Saturday. There's one in Dromore West, uh, Knockner mm. Arena from IT Sligo, ATU Sligo, sorry, and Ban- Banada. So there's three of them. So again, have you ever done that? Middle of the one night year, walk? One uh, year, yes, a couple of years. I won't be doing it this year because we're away, but uh, okay. yeah. Yeah, it's great a, spirit and a great feeling out of it, yeah. I think I think it's it's as much that as you know the fundraising and the awareness I think is uh yeah. just it's a moment for people and a memory and just a bit of fun, you yeah, know. A bit of fun, uh, was, yeah. Social media roundup again, I'm not gonna go through all of them, but I love this in the weekender as well. There's lot lots of little bits of news there from the I see Eagles Flying, Sligo Triathlon Club, mm-hmm. Sligo Drama Circle, they've been asked to perform their uh, amazing show Gaslight oh, yeah. at a Listol Writers. Listol, yeah. yeah, so it's yeah. just real I saw that production, it's a fabulous production. I, I missed yeah. it each time no, and really I good love production. I'm delighted to see them travelling with it, yeah. Yeah. So again, uh, I love that little social media roundup. One thing I don't know, has this been in the paper and I've just kept missing it? Schools roundup. And again, I'm not going to do it like the Sligo Grammar, Ballino Community College and Summerhill. And it just shows some of the projects they're doing. Mm-hmm. Diversity Day, National Tree Week. Uh, there was one brilliant one here that I see it. Uh, Speak Ukrainian Challenge. Isn't that lovely to see? I think Summerhill, as far as I know, are actually they, there's um, Ukrainian classes. For this, so the teachers and students are actually learning. Yeah, well they that's have a, what it is. Number. Yeah. Ballinod have quite a number of new Ukraine. I mean, there has to be some structured response, you know, strategic yeah. response to that rather than, you know, just waiting to see what happens. So it's yeah. great to see the schools have embraced but that. But I love to see what, you know, our teenagers are getting up yeah. to in their well, schools. They're getting up to loads. And it's really good, yeah, you know. Yeah. There's so many things there that you wouldn't realise is going on. Uh, so that's actually a really good piece to read for anyone. And maybe you can help out with some of the things. Maybe they need help, advice, tips, sponsorship, who knows. Uh, more entertainment. Queen of Folk, and now I can't say I know her, Peggy Seeger. Pete Seeger's wife, yeah. Ah, yeah. now I have it, okay. Yeah. So yeah. She's in the Hawkswell, Thursday, June the 2nd. Uh, the Direct Theatre, Theatre are bringing yeah. their show, um, it is called The Visit. That's on Tuesday, May the 31st. So a lot happened in the Hawkswell in May, and again, there's full listings there in the ads. Um, let me just see. I think that's all from our Weekender section. As I said, we don't delve into the sport too deeply. Um, over to the champion again we don't double up on the stories because there's a lot of the yeah. same uh, young guy guy who used to play football with Marcus Moore it's just nice to see his memory is still there after 10 uh, years yeah. and they've raised like 6,000 in the last couple of years Super, for different yeah, charities yeah. so again well done to their family there they've always put in a lot of energy and work and a real gentleman and a real sad a real sad loss uh, another little interesting story here I see uh, calls to make lettings long term I didn't realise this that there's so few houses available but there's Airbnb houses uh are all over the place. But there's a the, the, well, look, that's their own business. I don't have a personal worry about that, but uh, you need to have planning permission if any let is over 90 days, which clearly hap- isn't happening at the moment. And I see a local re- representative there, Nessa Cosgrove, uh, mm. fighting for this. That's an intriguing one. I didn't realise there was a legality to uh, many days. So Yeah, but the question is, to the, see. you know, is does the governance work in these sort of things? I mean, going back to the actual letting of property, as you know, and we talked about this, that yeah. you can't get a property. Yeah. You can't buy because the, you, you look at the price of a property one day and it's gone up. So this was something that 10 years ago... Uh, and I was in a number of committees talking about, you know, what Sligo look, will look like in 10 years' time mm. and how are we preparing for it. And the sort of attitude, to be honest, Brendan, was, Ash, we'll wait and see. Paper. And it's <laughs> happened now. And, and there's this big clamour to build houses, to get houses. Yeah. Um, and because, you, you know, I think the bypass of Carrie and Shannon should have happened five years ago, apparently. But when that happens, I mean, the new road into Sligo, this city town is going to burgeon you know just going to yeah and as you said they need to make the plans quick so much hard, on, yeah. It, yeah and people yeah. want to live here i mean you, you 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 get that you know yeah it's just interesting just one line there in a housing crisis in every single county except for dublin we have more houses for tourism than we do for rent it's an intriguing mm. stat there so well, yeah, as you said there if people own you know people uh, uh, you know people have a right to do what they want yeah, but yeah. It's, it's just in terms of society and what, what's happening yeah I suppose there's a lot of Airbnbs town. maybe it's it's houses that it's not the owner occupier so, yeah, yeah, so yeah, I suppose yeah. yeah there's a little bit look at topical it should be yeah. interesting to see where it goes there's the ATU open day it's on Saturday from 10am to 2 and as I said there's loads of fun entertainment talks and tours do you like the their logo I love it 
Yeah. Yeah, I just but don't. The, when, when it was originally, it was the Connacht Alliance was the name, which meant nothing. I think yeah, yeah. the Atlantic University is a great name. Uh, I think everything. I can just see branding wise, hoodies, branding t-shirts, wise. all that. Yeah. I think they've got yeah. it absolutely uh, yeah. on point And when there. you see it around the logo, it, it looks really good, yeah. Yeah, uh, a bit of a darker but a historic tale. Uh, talking about epidemics, uh, there's a new TV series which starts, I think it was started last night, but it's on every week. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, the Sligo episode, which features on the cholera epidemic, of 1832. God, you think and we'd Bram have enough? Stoker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, enough epidemics. But if you're into that, and again, there's a lovely piece talking about it, uh, yeah. and a bit more of the, the Sligo links and the history of that there. So mm. that's that's uh, every Wednesday at 9.45 at TG Cahar. Again, TG Cahar, mm. forever putting on new stuff, fresh stuff. You know what I mean? It's great. So uh, more excitement out in Strand Hill. You know, this is out your side of the town I was, there. I was out uh, when they were putting in these new with the crane. I mean, Sorry, this is the surf centre. We're talking center, about yeah. the new surf centre. And they've really started to put the pieces together. Lovely yeah. art pieces. What is the basis of this? Is it just to allow people to come and surf? Is it a bit about history of surf? Is it a bit of what? Well, it's a surf a centre of excellence. So I think okay. the question, Brendan, is going to be you know, will it follow through in terms of for the community? And I think okay. that's what everybody's watching. And I'm not being negative or no, anything. No, no, no. But that's it's the just, cynicism that's, people that's, are asking the yeah. question. So it, it is really brilliant for Strand Hill and it's it's great to just have to get it right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, look again, great development. And it looks like yeah. it's going to be open uh, mid-summer. Yeah. Uh, and again, if you're into your heritage, uh, St. Angela's offer courses this September. Now, this is really intriguing. This is now going to be a new uh, course. They're offering a diploma in arts, folklore and heritage of the Northwest and a master of arts Historical and heritage studies. So folklore and heritage, and that's just a different kind of... I know uh, Shambles from the surfing out in Strand Hill, he did something like this when he was on the show, he chatted to us about it. So there's a different kind of course for people if they want to do it in the Northwest. Uh, I like the sound of it. Something well, interesting. They're they're, they're, if they're doing courses and a master's in it, there are yeah. going to be openings for it. But I mean, that's what you want to to create, to to preserve all the information and stuff that's come back, whether it's Cara Moore and get that out there, you know, yep. and get people to know what they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. Again, another feature there on the, the stories night there in Lily's. So again, and they're raising money for charity as well, by the way. So look right. at, uh, well done to Brilliant, them. Yeah. And uh, just to skip in through then, uh, there's a great feature uh, of the old days, past life. It's in the Sligo Champion, it's six pitch, and there is some dodgy haircuts and dodgy it fashion is, yeah. but well, still for people who are in Sligo talk. <laughs> back then uh, I think there's a great uh, great little feature there uh, with a lot of uh, old memories uh, lastly then just I seen a chess event and if you see the pictures of this huge and I love this the diversity of kind of going it's not all GA rugby soccer that Sligo has something Look at the for numbers, huge yeah, yeah. numbers you'll see this in the paper it's in the champion yeah. and it was a huge hit so there was over like Never had the brain tip. for it, Brendan, I'm afraid. Uh, my, yeah. my kids can play it. I, I suppose yeah. if I took the time to learn it now, <laughs> it'd be good. But yeah. drafts is as far as I'll go now yeah. with the board games. And the uh, there great Yeah, too. so that's, that's all in. That's more or less all the bits in the papers. As I say, go check them out, support them. You know, they create jobs. Not only that, but they support businesses, communities. They help out with so many things. And hopefully that little bit we've given you there gives you an idea. I'll just dip into the sports just to say well done to the, the Sligo Rugby, who had an under-13, under-15 and under-17 Connacht champions. Uh, over the weekend, I'm pretty sure it happened Great, over the last yeah. few days. Uh, Sligo Rovers had a draw and there no home game this weekend. The Sligo ladies play Saturday at 2 o'clock at home match, so go and support them. And the under-20 uh, under twenty GA team have their All-Ireland semi-final, 4 o'clock. It's up in Cavan if you want to go, or it'll be live in TG Car. So the very best to look to them. And the GA minor ladies who won the, uh, sorry, I think it's the Connacht All-Ireland B final, or sorry, the All-Ireland B final recently, so well done to them. So again, if you want to delve more into sports, there's plenty in the back. You'd know Rovers were here last weekend, Shamrock Rovers, because you certainly could hear them before the match. A bit more noise when they come to town. The Garavo, oh Jesus, there's something else. (laughs) Yeah, we happen to be out and about. Well, before we go, Sean, you you have a a few little projects in the the pot coming up. Can you tell us a little bit more? Yeah, we keep... This is the Mad Ravens Theatre Group, for anyone that's not aware. Yeah, we keep digging away. Uh, We've been, despite the pandemic, pandemic, we've been active the last year. So I, we were to do The Boy from the Far Side of the Moon. So a new show, uh, The House in Cedarwood Drive, which is set in a haunted house. And um, we're just trying to close down now in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're reading through the draft on Sunday and then uh, we're nearly cast and we're meeting on Sunday. Uh, we haven't been able to meet for the last few months. So we're meeting to do the read and uh, get a handle on it. So I'm probably pushing up the ante because we've brought in a production manager yeah. and... Um, 
uh, expect to have to raise a few more bob but I think uh, this will be exciting so it's not till November so we'll okay. break now for the summer and I, when it comes to good weather I just want to get out on the yeah, lake and yeah, get yeah. on the boat and everything okay. so uh, yeah so watch the, keep an eye out for that the Mad future. Ravens on Facebook well Sean listen thanks for coming in That's I really enjoyed your chat yeah, I always yeah, say yeah, I love bringing pleasure. in a guest that maybe has a different opinion or maybe knows things more than just in the paper so it's great to get the chat so uh, look the best look of the show no doubt I might be nearby when it's going on so we'll see what happens uh, once again Thanks to the Riverside Hotel, who's been always very generous letting have the space. Thanks to Brian, who does all the, the series production stuff and edits behind the scenes. And as I said, we'll be back next week again. We have a couple of guests maybe talking to the guys from the Wild Roots team. And uh, hopefully we'll have our what we might call our regular uh, Sligo Show interviews back very soon as well. We have plans afoot. So check us out on all our social media and we'll see you next week. <laughs>